Yeah, if, if you notice behind me, apparently, uh, our, our show logo is on the big screen, which we love here at Bank of America Stadium, welcomed by the Panthers and our awesome partnership. Um, and here's, you know, Dave Canales, and behind us, uh, somebody stealing you. Oh, I'm sorry, this is when you were introduced for the first time. Dave, tell me about this. Well, I don't know if you noticed right off the bat, I left the guy hanging right there in the intro. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we ended up fixing that later on in, in building in-house. So, But um, what a great reception from the, uh, from the building, the type of energy that we're looking to build here and, and really be about the players, just be all about their development, um, all of us together. What are you looking to build here? Um, I'm really looking to build a brand of football that we can be proud of, that the Carolinas can say, this is Panthers football. Um, the great part is we got a great starting point with the Jero Averro, um, our defensive coordinator. The continuity, what he was able to do in year one, mm -hmm. I'm starting to learn more and more about this system, but as I see the intricacies of what they do, how he got them to communicate in year one is fantastic, and so have that to build off of, really important. And then, of course, on the offensive side, is like, let's just get our football right. Let's get back to the basics. Let's hit our combos. Mm -hmm. Let's get our pass protections ID'd properly so then we can evaluate the talent. So if we give them a good foundation, then we can really evaluate what their maximum capabilities are. And that's really where my mind goes and my heart goes for our, for our players. How helpful is it to have some stability on the defensive side of the ball? Because you, know, you have the keys to the castle here. Yeah. You come in, obviously, number four scoring defense last year. You have some studs on that defense, of course. But Evero was able to get them to play at such a high level. What was the moment that you said, oh, I'm going to keep him? Well, I mean, to me, you know, coming into the job, this was like a dream scenario for me to say the defensive side is in good hands. How can I then just focus on building this offense the right way, um, starting it from the ground up, starting it inside out and making sure that we can play a brand of football that we're proud of. And I think what I can bring in addition to the defensive side is this cohesive identity where we run the ball. We play great defense. Mm -hmm. And we run like crazy on special teams, and that becomes us. That becomes Panthers football, and that's what our fan base expects to see on TV or when they come into our stadium. They expect to see that brand week in and week out. And you know this team very well because you take them on. You were, of course, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers by way of Seattle where you were with Pete Carroll for so long. Somebody in the crowd said you're the second coming of Pete Carroll. Well, that— I won't are, say who. Those are really big shoes to fill, mm -hmm. uh, fill and I mean that— you know, literally and figuratively. Okay. What size um, is it? What are you like a size 15? What do you? I, mean? I don't know, but they're they're right. special. They're special made shoes. But anyway, the, the, between that and just who he is, you know, I think one of the things that I learned from him, if I could take one thing away from my time with Pete, it was be you, hmm. be yourself, be the best version of who you are and what you can become. Um, so for me, I think it's just like not being concerned with what he did, but how he did it and the things that were so important to him. Um, and we see those we see that blueprint across the league with these successful head coaches that have had 10 years that built good championship style football for a long time. They all care about the same thing. It's taking care of the ball. Mm -hmm. It's taking it away on defense. It's having great effort running like crazy and playing smart in situational football. Those are the key pillars, the key tenants that a good football foundation is built on. So that's really what I want to do here and just try to um, really just try to inject my energy, my personality into what we're doing here on the field. So you have some stability on defense, which we love. And then on offense, you brought in Idzik yeah. with you, the youngest offensive coordinator in the National Football League at 32. Now, the, he was with you, of course, in Seattle. You brought him to Tampa. Now he's your OC. It shows a lot about how you value him. Oh, yeah. And and uh, in 2023, I kind of like to have a word for the year. Um, okay. Some, I'm not into resolutions, but my word for 2023 was covered. And I want to I want to make sure that we're covered. The accountability piece, all those things, the buzzwords kind of in the in the corporate world. Um, for me, it was like if we can have open conversations, if I can do a great job at listening to my staff, mm -hmm. listening to my players, then I'll feel covered. Brad is piece number one for that. It was in Tampa. I wanted to make sure it was my first time being an offensive coordinator. I had someone who was going to cover me in my blind spots. Where are the where are the places that may I might be drawn somewhere else, but I have somebody who says, hey, don't forget about this, this, and this. OTAs are coming up or training camps coming up. Hey, here comes the bye week. Remember, this is how we do these things. Um, and I really feel covered by Brad. So I knew when I got a chance 
to be a head coach, he was going to be a part of that in some capacity. Um, and it's just been really cool to have him, to see him grow, to see him really take that leadership role mm -hmm. as we have these conversations to lead the charge of it. So really important. Russell, Gino, Baker, what is it about you that gets the best out of these young men at quarterback? Well, I truly mean this. Um, you just, those names you mentioned, those guys have a lot of football under their belt. And so I wanted to leverage their experience. I wanted to leverage their expertise. Um, the biggest thing, like talking to Gino and then talking to Baker was, you've seen every coverage. You've seen every exotic blitz that they can throw at you. And there's value in that, yeah. Absolutely. With all the coordinators they had experience with, you've had a chance to run pretty much every pass play you can think of. Every run alert system, all the different language. Guys, you got everything you need here's what we're going to do and now trust what you see. And I think that leads to a really confident um, level of play. I think that leads to like a really fast level of play where if I have all these things kind of in buckets in my mind, okay. then I can just be in player's mind and I can just be in that flow and, and try to get them to that point. And then on top of it, it's relationship. It's, it's building an environment where I'm, I'm interested in this person maximizing their capabilities. I want to make sure we get every single drop out of Russell, Gino, Baker, and now here comes Bryce. And how can I get Bryce to play to his fullest capabilities? And it all starts with relationship. It starts with that connection piece. They know me. I know them. So as we work through hard things, there isn't this like, this is mine and this is yours. Mm -hmm. It's this collaborative thing of shoulder to shoulder, really on a journey together and just taking on challenges side by side as opposed to like, I am your biggest challenge to get to where you want to go. I've never met you before, but I just want to say I get it. I, I get it. I understand you're I, I'm you I love talking to you. I'm loving these the ways that you you're so measured and thoughtful about how you approach things. You mentioned experience as a bucket, a big bucket and leaning on that. You don't have that with Bryce. Right. You talk about relationships. You're just starting to build this relationship with this right. young quarterback. What is your approach? Yeah, right right to the first off, tell me your story. You know, I got to meet him just for a small windows last year in the valuation process. Um and then I wanted him to know where I come from, um, how I've gotten to this point, the things that are important to me. Not that like, hey, what's important to me should be important to you. I don't mean that. I mean, I just want him to know who's talking to him, who's asking him to do these hard things um, so mm -hmm. that we can really just dissolve those boundaries and that, you know, just that really cut coach player thing, you know, where it's like, no, we're in this together. We're all trying to help the Panthers win football games, you know, but he's got a lot of experience, a lot of big stage wins, the Heisman, a lot of pressure, things that he's had to deal with. I'm going to lean on that experience. I'm going to lean on his poise. One of the first things I mentioned about Bryce is when you watch him play in college football and you saw him in those big games on TV, whether it was early in the season mm -hmm. or whether it was later in the season against really good opponents, if you look behind the face mask, the eyes are the same. His countenance is the same. And hmm. He's just cold-blooded. And so those things were what really, you know, encouraged me to say this is going to be the top guy coming out because he's the guy. He is him. That's the, Is that what people say nowadays? He, he is him. Yeah. So, sure. Um, I, so I, I mean, just, you just called Bryce Young cold-blooded. I like that. Yeah. Oh, that's I like I hearing that. And so now it's about just giving him tools, um, giving him the green light to use those tools in an appropriate fashion and playing a, a brand of offensive football that we're proud of. Read that, though. 62 sacks last year. Yeah. He was hit 115 times, second most in a league. He's cold-blooded. Yeah. You got to protect him. And I have, a, I have a feeling a lot of that has to do with timing, which I feel like you are obsessed with. Why do you, you're, what is your relationship with stopwatches? Oh, yeah, it's great. So um, I had Tom Moore last year, you know, 84-year-old coach who's, who's sitting right there, and he's, like, watching that clock. And if it was pretty late, he's looking over at me. So I look over at Bri uh, at uh, Baker, you know, look mm -hmm. over here. It's like, hey, Tom's on our butt here. We better get the ball out quickly. But it actually goes back to our time in Seattle and just kind of taking the averages and, and how long can we expect pass protection to hold up on a regular basis, you know? And so, you know, for us, it was always like that 2.7, three seconds to the check down. Yeah. And you're moving to get to it. So having that, having that clock in your mind where 
this play, the, the protection is going to dissolve at some point. We need to start having a plan for moving down the field. Um, but just building the whole scheme that way. We just said, why wouldn't we just build a pass game that's centered around getting the ball out quickly? And now I can give the offensive line confidence to go ahead and get confident in your sets, guys. This ball is coming out, you know, where they don't have to start to it's anticipate. It's going to make all rush. the difference if you, can, if you can get that stopwatch working with this offensive line and this quarterback. I can't wait to see what you guys can do in this division that you know so well. Absolutely. I'm excited about it. And then, you know, just talking about the sacks and all that, if mm -hmm. you watched some of the big hits Bryce took, the few plays that followed were some of his biggest throws. And so to watch him again, just kind of reestablish, refocus, however he does that and recenter, you know, which I'm really curious to see, to hear what his in-game process is, because I know he has one. It's it's evident out there that he'll just bounce right back. He'll stand in there with courage and he'll he'll throw a strike on the next play. Oh, my gosh. Now you're in this division like you're in a weird spot here. You like Baker. You worked with Baker. You got the best yeah. out of Baker. And now, you know, are you rooting for him to get this deal that he gets to come back and and do his thing with Mike Evans officially? Or are you kind of rooting against because you don't have to take him on twice a year. Yeah, well, I think the more resources he, you know, occupies for the Bucks, the less, you know, great players they can add to the team. So let's there go is, ahead and pay that guy whatever that. he wants. And pay Baker Mayfield. That was kind of in the works all along. You know, <laughs> let's course. get this market going up here. So give us the advantage again. We love that. Um, you know, it, it's it's your ship. You could. There are a lot of people on Twitter. I said I was coming to Carolina. They make the Russell Wilson, Wilson connection right away. Yeah. He hasn't he hasn't looked the same since you were there. It's true. It's a huge credit to you and what you were able to get out of him in your time uh, in Seattle. Then he goes on to the Broncos. It doesn't work out. You could bring Russell Russell in here. I'm seeing tweets about it all day long on my timeline. Why won't you? Or why don't you? Well, this this is not the situation for Russ. But what I will say about him is taking the taking that chance and that opportunity to go to Denver. Um, I really admire him for that. I really admire the courage it took to say, I'm going to branch out away from what I'm comfortable with, you know, and, and certainly guys like me who was with him for all 10 years, you know, and uh, the level of comfort that comes from like, I know exactly what he wants, what he needs, what he's going to ask for. I can anticipate those things. And he really, be he really gambled on himself to go and try to do something a different way to see what that could become. So, and hmm. what it's become, Hey, the, the film's out there, but I really credit him for that. I love that. Okay. Last one for you. Your experience here in Carolina, the warm embrace by the fans, what you want for them, what you want to say to them as we sit here in Charlotte with, you know, there's the Sir Purr just hanging out, chilling behind us, trying to steal the show. What do you want to say to, to, to sort of the fan base and what they can expect? You got the draft, Julius Peppers Hall of Fame induction, a game in Germany this year, so much to look forward to. I mean, there's just a lot of excitement, and I want to just I want to ride the momentum of, of getting here um, in just a really fantastic organization. Every time I peel a layer back, it's just like, look what's in place here. And I have to get credit to the people that were here before me for just putting some of those pieces in place so that I can come and just get our football right and make it about the ball, you know, and that's been the emphasis for us this whole off season is, is how can we just get back to the fundamentals of ball and then we can start to showcase our talent. But I think, you know, for, for Panthers fans, for the Carolinas, you know, it's, it's show up as you show up to practices, as you show up to games, starting in the preseason, we're going to take those games as serious as any of them. Mm. I hope the, hopefully they come out here and they see just great effort. They see people straining to finish plays. I hope that they see a lot of juice, a lot of excitement along the sideline with the coaches, just really encouraging each other, celebrating the things to celebrate. Um, I hope they see a toughness about, a, about our ball, starting with the run game and the defense and special teams. I hope they can see that toughness. And then finally, I hope they see us make some really smart decisions, end of half, end of games. Wow, that was a really good way to keep the clock running or that was an excellent usage of clock to get us into a scoring play. I hope that they can see that type of brand of football for a long time and and I'm committed to bringing that on a daily basis. It's about every day just waking up, got a new set of downs, it's first and 10. Where are we going today? We're mm -hmm. just trying to find a win. Can we define what that looks like? today on March 6th. Make it about the ball, which is what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing here on March 6th. Why are you at the facility? What are you even working on? We just, we were working hard all day today? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we got we got free agency. We got the, um, the combine, the draft, you know, combines behind us. Um, offensively, we're working on schemes. So we're mm -hmm. doing a lot of teaching, bringing some guys in from Tampa, from Seattle, kind of seeing the different directions we went with the offense. Very cool. In two different places. And then selfishly the thing that i love my curious by nature like i sit in our defensive self-scout and this is a defensive scheme i've been going against for a long time mm -hmm. 
And just to hear the ins and outs of it, the tools that they use, the communication lines, the little micro adjustments, that's where I just feel like I'm at a coach's convention again, and I'm sitting in a clinic just kind of listening to these pros. That's what you, you know? love the most, I can Absolutely. Tell. And so yeah. um, for me to sit back, take notes, and really connect with the defensive staff, um, all of that. And, of course, uh, Tracy, Tracy Smith and uh, Darren Bates on the special team side, really just evaluating players and who can we use more um, and what type of special teams unit are we going to be because we got a punter who's got a lot of different skills. Um, <laughs> you are such, so. you're, you're a sick pup is what I call you. Like you're the <laughs> sick pup who's talking to me about the punter right now on March 6th. And that's all you need to know. I get it. I, I'm ready to run through a wall for you, coach. So I'm so happy to meet you. Congratulations. You have a lot to go figure out. Luke Keekley somewhere in the building. You can get his hit in his head uh, a little bit. And, yeah. uh, you know, Brian Burns on line one. Get out of here. Thank you. Right. Nice to meet you. And we'll be back here with you. Luke Keekley joining the show in just a little bit.